Hey everybody and welcome to the Monin Extraction Masterclass with myself Dan Fellows and also Lucas from the Beverage Innovation Team at Monin. So extraction is a really broad topic and it spans across different uh, drinks categories as well as food as well. So my focus is specifically around coffee and cocktails and Lucas has a really good understanding of different ways of extracting flavors in more complex ways. So Lucas, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi guys, I uh, hope you're doing well, staying, stay, staying well and staying safe. Um, thanks Dan for your intro. Uh, I'm working at Monin as a beverage innovation uh, executive uh, in UK and Ireland. And today we're gonna touch this super exciting topic Extraction, as uh, Dan already mentioned. Uh, so just uh, simply, I'm gonna say in a few sentences what extraction is for me and the way I understand it. Uh, so basically, extraction is the action when you're pulling uh, molecules, flavor molecules, from ingredient into liquid solution uh, using time, effort, and force. Uh, very similar, like uh, as for Dan, I uh, making coffee. Uh, Dan, do you want to touch on the coffee side? Yes, so I think um, a really important part of what we're going to be doing today is try to bring the two together. So I'll be talking about uh, how we extract with coffee, as well as Lucas talking about how flavors are extracted into different Monin products. And then finally, we're going to be coming together and we're going to be making a drink, which highlights different ways of extracting flavors into things like spirits and cocktails as well. And you want to hang around for that because it's a really innovative and interesting drink, and I really can't wait to try it. So first of all, um, it'd be really cool to talk about how different flavors are extracted into Monin products. So Lucas, I know you have a good understanding of this. Would you like to give a little bit more information? Yeah, sure. Uh, so at Monin, uh, we use a few different methods of extraction. Uh, so I'm going to touch on every each of them uh, slightly. Um, so there are three the most common ones. So one is uh, really well known is maceration is for instance like how you would make a cup of tea or coffee or taking slow berries and putting in the gin to make a slow gin. This is called maceration. Uh, the second one, also very well known and quite common, is called distillation method. Uh, so you could use uh, pot stills, uh, different type of stills, for example, as this, uh, which is called protovab, uh, so it's vacuum uh, distillation uh, setup. And the third one, probably the most complex, the most expensive and known for is like uh, high notes of the flavors. So think about perfumes uh, and it's called uh, critical CO2 extraction. Uh, so it's very expensive, uh, it's hard to make and that's why the, all the aromas and perfumes are that expensive because they're using the methods uh, of critical CO2 extraction. Uh, but we use in some of the modern products as well, which is super exciting because we probably are one of the few brands in the world who uses this method like to extract the flavor. Nice. I think um, a good example of this would be the Paragon products, wouldn't it? So do you want to quickly yeah. um, run through what the Paragon products are? Yeah, so Paragon uh, products actually uh, happen to have a couple of bottles of it as well. Uh, so we have uh, the range of single botanical uh, cordials. Uh, so obviously like the very first series is uh, around the peppers. Uh, so we have white penja, uh, we have timo berry, and we have rue berry. Uh, so they're all like three different peppers uh, with very different uh, flavor profiles. Uh, but because you're using only single ingredient and you want to like, get this uh, very rounded flavor, um, I'm going to explain how we involve the whole free um, extraction processes. Uh, so even on the bottle, like he says, uh, the methods we're using, uh, so one of them is maceration. Uh, so basically what we do, we take lots of peppers and we macerate uh, into liquid, uh, into cordial. Then the second method is, as I mentioned earlier, is distillation. Uh, with distillation, you get like slightly different notes. Uh, so you have like a higher, like top notch uh, kind of notes than you would get uh, from maceration. Uh, so that gives a little bit more complexity in the final uh, product. And the finally uh, critical CO2 extraction, which is super expensive, very complicated. Uh, like the results are like very tiny, uh, but it gives you absolutely like the highest notes of the flavor. And when you combine all these free um, extracted liquids together, you 
have like the most rounded flavor of the single botanical, in this case, our uh, pepper cordial. Uh, but the similar, similar things we do uh, with the rest of the range, uh, for instance, uh, white chocolate, uh, we would distill uh, uh, basically uh, cacao, like to get like this uh, uh, white chocolate notes, or um, in other examples, uh, we might use various botanicals just to rebuild the flavor. But we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later in our masterclass. Nice. So from my point of view, uh, extraction is at the, you know, the heart of everything I do with coffee. Fundamentally, we're trying to extract the flavors from coffee beans, roasted coffee beans, into an extracted beverage. So there are two key ways to do this, and I'm going to pull two different brew methods from in front of me. So the first, which I'm sure everyone has in their cupboard, is a cafetiere. And the second is a kind of pour over type method. So cafetiere is a really good example of an immersion technique. So I guess when we're comparing to the uh, techniques Lucas spoke about, this is closest, I guess, to maceration because we're trying to really incorporate those coffee beans into the liquid. So we're gonna be doing two demos. The first of which is the immersion. And then the second, this kind of pour over technique would be a percolation, a percolation extraction. So this is where we have a bed of ground coffee and we pour water that draws through the bed. So in this example on the left, on my left, I should say, the cafetiere, it's steeped together. Whereas on my right, your left, the Clever Dripper, um, when it's a pour over method, just poured straight through. The two kind of mix, but also are drawing through into the final beverage as well. So I'm gonna be doing two demos, 20 grams of coffee, 300 grams of water, both times, and we should get quite different results. So I'm gonna add my coffee to each of these different brew devices. And it's worth mentioning this device here is called a Clever Dripper. This is actually capable of both immersion and percolation. But by pouring the coffee straight into the dripper today and pouring the water through, this is gonna be pure percolation. So I've got my coffee here, which is freshly ground just, just before we started. Gonna add my 20 grams. And I'm keeping as many variables as I can fixed. So we're actually using the same grind size using the same coffee, which is a washed Colombian coffee. And then we're gonna be using 96 degree water, which I'm gonna grab now. Can you tell us, uh, Dan, why the temperature is uh, so important uh, in extracting coffee, for instance? Yes, yeah, so when we're extracting coffee, and I'm gonna start pouring 300 mils in now, we're basically applying the three T's to extract the coffee, which are time, temperature, and turbulence. So by controlling these different variables, we can extract different amounts from those uh, ground coffee particles, I guess. And when you do each of these, um, when you control each of these variables, we're gonna either be getting more extraction or less extraction from those beans. So time, obviously the longer we brew for, the higher the extraction will be. And when we extract coffee, we're gonna be getting a different balance between acidity, sweetness, and bitterness. So a very under-extracted coffee, for example, would probably be more towards the acidity end of the spectrum, whereas a very over-extracted coffee, as you've probably tasted before, moves towards the bitter end of the spectrum. And what we want to do is find a happy medium between the three, looking for optimal sweetness as well. So as you can see, the coffee and the water are completely mixed in the cafetiere, whereas in here, in the pour over, we're actually pouring the water over the coffee and it's drawing through the bed of coffee. So we're gonna be using a similar brew time for each of the two beverages. But having that full contact between the coffee and the water, I would expect to give us a little bit more body, a little bit more intensity. Whereas in the pour over method, the percolation, I'd expect a little bit more clarity and a little bit more definition. So when we talk about the time, the longer the extraction, the higher the extraction level will be. When it comes to temperature, which was your question, Lucas, the temperature, again, the higher, the more capable of extracting it is. So obviously with something like cold brew, we extract for a very long time with a cold temperature. When we're extracting filter coffee, we wanna use an optimal temperature to balance the time and vice versa. 
So we're going to be using a much higher temperature to extract much quicker. So probably in about three minutes. And then finally turbulence. You'll have seen I was stirring each of these. The more we stir and agitate the bed of coffee, the more we're increasing the extraction. So we need to really carefully balance those three T's in order to get an optimal extraction with the perfect level of acidity, sweetness and bitterness and not too much of anything. So this is drawn through nicely. As with the cafetiere, we all know how to make a cafetiere. Just gonna plunge that to keep any of those kind of solids inside there. And I'm just gonna pour this into my jug. And just at the same time, my pour over is just finishing. So we've actually got the same total contact time of just about two minutes, 45 seconds, but we should have quite different products. So there we have two on paper, very similar extractions, 20 grams of coffee, 300 grams of 96 degree water. But you can see even looking through them, the cafetiere with that kind of full immersion where the coffee and the water mix, it's got a little bit less of the clarity, whereas the pour over is much more clear and defined. And now we'll have a quick tasting. So now we're gonna taste the coffees. So first of all, the full immersion technique, which was the cafetiere. So straight away I can see this is really intense, a really dark color. It's not got too much kind of clarity, it's a little bit murky. And that's from those two ingredients, the coffee and the water kind of intermingling together. So it smells really good. Wow, so really high body, lots of red fruit in there, a little bit of kind of appleiness as well. But the thing that jumps out to me is that body. So it's really kind of full bodied, kind of creamy, very intense. And then when we compare that to the percolation method, the pour over, Straight away, it looks a little bit lighter, a little bit more uh, clarity in the cup as well. A little bit less aroma, actually. <laughs> and yeah, that's completely different. So this is a little bit more acidity, a little bit more brightness, really, really good clarity, a very clean cup. And the body is much lighter, a little bit more delicate. So the flavor profile is not drastically different, but we just get more clarity in the pour over and more body in the immersion. But I would really encourage you to try this at home. See which you prefer. There's no right and wrong in coffee. Just whichever you like the most is the best for you. So I'm gonna put these away. And now we're gonna talk about alcohol, which is why we're all here. So Lucas, do you wanna talk about a few techniques of extracting things into alcohol and techniques for cocktails? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so as I mentioned uh, before, uh, probably like the most known is uh, maceration, uh, which we found anywhere like around us, including the alcohol, uh, including the famous uh, bath of gin. Um, but like talking about gin itself, uh, because it's uh, technically taking a lot of different botanicals, extracting these fla uh, the flavors into liquid, uh, which is our final product is gin. Uh, but every gin starts with maceration as well because you want to like get as many flavors and as many uh, flavor molecules inside the liquid before even you start distillation you would leave uh, this uh, basically neutral grain spirit uh, with different botanicals to macerate for a day or two before you start distillation and getting like different uh, uh, different molecules uh, from the ingredient um, so this like a gin for, for instance like talking about alcohol involves uh, both methods uh, and like you got most spirits uh, let's say some of the mezcals uh, is very famous and very expensive uh, mezcals called pechuga uh, so it's a style of the mezcal they use uh, different botanicals sometimes even bones or meat uh, into distillation just like to get a little bit more complexity in a, in a final spirit uh, in a final result and today, actually, uh, I'm quite excited uh, to show you uh, how we using one of the methods, uh, which is called vacuum distillation. Uh, we're going to distill a coffee liqueur, which is going to be completely clear because nothing out of the still comes uh, with a color. Uh, because in general, it's just our colors and sugars, uh, like they're too heavy to evaporate. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about vacuum distillation. 
uh, which I have a beautiful setup uh, just right behind me. Uh, so if you get closer, uh, guys, you can see I'm going to explain every part of this process. Um, so as you see here, we have a water bath, uh, which is set at the moment on 40 degree. So you think 40 degree is actually not hot enough. It's like a very hot uh, summer day. Uh, but what vacuum distillation does, it basically, because my vacuum pump is plugged in, it sucks all the air out. Sucking all the air out inside the system uh, forces to drop atmospheric pressure. And atmos like normal atmospheric pressure, our liquids, uh, such as water, like would boil on 90 uh, degree. Uh, talking about alcohol, it would be around 70. But because the pressure is so low in here, our liquids actually going to be boiling as as low as um, 20 uh, degree temperature. And the main difference and the crucial part, like doing this method, is the best example. Think about the apples. Apple on 70 degree uh, or like 90 degree, it tastes cooked. Where on 20 degree, which is room temperature, is going to taste fresh. And this is exactly like the flavors we're going to be getting using this specific method. So if I would check blows of apples in here, the final result, my final distillate, like would be um, basically it would taste like a fresh apple uh, because there's no heat applied. Uh, the reason why this uh, distillation flask is spinning is because uh, you're creating much larger, uh, uh, basically, heat heating surface. Uh, so everything is going to happen a little bit more fast and more efficient. Uh, depends how, how big your surface you, you regulate in your speed. So now, like, when it starts boiling, even in these low temperatures, because there's no air in there, uh, we're going through this pipe into condenser. So as you see, there's like a little pipe inside wrapped around, which creates about um, two square meters of uh, condensation surface. And inside the little pipe, we have water coming from the chiller, which is in very low temperature. So our chili is set on minus five. So that water is forced to run through. And basically, because the, the, the fumes, uh, the steam that goes up, uh, it creates a temperature difference and is forced to condense on these pipes. And then it's dripping down in our collection flask, as you see here. Um, what we're distilling today is basically, we're making coffee liqueur, but we're making our style. Uh, so it's lightly spiced. Uh, we have cinnamon cloves and cacao nibs in there. Uh, also just a tiny touch of, of lightly uh, toasted coffee. And then a uh, majority of coffee is uh, heavily toasted uh, from my friends at Moloko. Um, so I left like everything to macerate, uh, following traditional methods of gin, and then putting in a vacuum distillation uh, to get this clear spirit out. It comes out on 72% uh, of alcohol per volume, so we don't want to like use it a lot, and I dilute it down to 40%. Uh, uh, but yeah. Should we make a drink then? It's enough talking. Let's do some tasting. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. so what drink are we going to be making? I'm excited about this. So we're going to be making a twist on espresso martini. We're not going to be using uh, fresh brewed coffee, but we're going to be using uh, this beautiful uh, distilled spirit, uh, coffee spirit, uh, or spice coffee spirit, as you call it. Uh, I'm go we're going to be using uh, rum uh, from Venezuela uh, called Diplomatico Blanco, which is quite rich, quite bold. It's, it brings a lot of uh, interesting tropical notes, and I, I find it like quite nutty, which I think is going to work beautifully uh, with the coffee and cacao and the notes. And also, we're going to complement and put the flavors together using our modern white chocolate syrup. Love it. Um, so I think it's gonna be very interesting, very different, clear espresso martini with a little twist. Um, so should we make a drink together then? Yeah, I think for the, few, the viewers watching at home, this is quite an interesting concept because obviously a martini traditionally is a very clear drink, spirit forward, 
but then through kind of the 80s and the 90s, everything in a short glass became a martini. So this is going back to the kind of traditional spirit forward stirred down drink and taking the flavors of an espresso martini, but creating something very modern. So we're gonna make this drink for you now. So if you wanna grab your ingredients and we'll start going. Cool. So Dan, if you want to grab your fancy uh, cocktail glass and fill that with ice, so we set that aside to chill while we mixing our cocktail. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do first, we're gonna fill up our mixing glass. I've actually had mine in the freezer, so it's pretty cold. Ah, even better. Uh, I'm gonna fill up my mixing glass with ice. Why is the better? Keeps it colder. Uh, and we're gonna start with the rum. Uh, so I'm gonna use uh, 40 mils of our uh, diplomatic rum, straight into your glass. Uh, second thing, the start of the show. Which is delicious. Yeah, I love that rum so much. Uh, our start of the show is our extracted coffee spice liqueur, if we can call it like that. It's not really liqueur, there's no sugar, but it's a distillate. Uh, so I'm gonna do 20 mils of that straight in and then beautiful delicious morning white chocolate syrup so we're gonna go for 15 mils of that also straight in a glass in so there's some ingredients outside so and now just a stir I wouldn't overstir this drink uh, because obviously there's like so much going on. So you just want to make sure the drink is well chilled. Luckily enough, I have my laser thermometer here. So it's just gonna stay until it's like to minus five. So a little bit more. Got it on minus three. Exactly. It smells amazing from where I am. So now we're just gonna empty our cocktail glass and gonna strain it straight into your glass. This side, and as you see, guys, it's crystal clear. There's no even slight element of color in mine. And it smells amazing. Uh, you can add a little garnish. I, I said like leave it without garnish because I just like the fact that it's a crystal clear. Should we give it a taste then? Yeah, man, sounds, well, it looks incredible. Mm. Sure so to everyone watching, cheers. Here's a clear martini style espresso martini. Cheers. Cheers, Lucas. Cheers. Man, that's so good. Mm. Cheers. Mm. It's boozy. It's boozy. That's such a winner. You get the white chocolate and mm. coat in your mouth. Then you get like all this coffee with the slight spice yeah. notes coming through as well. Interesting, uh, interesting thing, uh, how the temperature actually uh, affects the flavors as well. Uh, mm. So it's like compare cold brew uh, to hot brew coffee like you did, um, yeah. you get like much different uh, textures and flavors from the cold brew. And it's the same thing mm -hmm. what we get with uh, our uh, cold distillation, vacuum distillation setup, mm -hmm. because the temperature is quite low. Like we distill only on 40% despite the liquid was boiling. Very delicious. Stirring it down super cold as well makes a nice and creamy texture. It's really, really delicious. Takes the edge off any sweetness. That is a banging drink. Exactly. Really, really cool. I and love quite it. Quite innovative and interesting. Isn't it? Yeah, I think if people ordered an espresso martini, they'd be quite surprised, but pleasantly surprised, I'm pretty sure. So I think that's a really nice way to round off everything today, taking a lot of the techniques we've spoken about and rolling them up into one really delicious, creative drink. So thanks very much, Lucas, for joining me. Uh, thank you, Dan, for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. I learned so much about coffee as well. Can't wait to try myself tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, hopefully it speaks soon. <laughs> yeah, and thanks so much for your interest. It's really eye-opening. Yeah, really eye-opening. I think we both 
you know, it's been really good talking to you about these interesting techniques, how they apply to our two worlds and bring them together. So thanks very much for joining me and thanks to the viewers for watching again. And we're really looking forward to seeing you next time. So in the meantime, stay safe and see you again.